The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Today, the Kraft folks have a surprise for every woman who serves French fried foods, for every woman who likes to bake, for every woman who makes salad dressings. This surprise is new Kraft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. New Kraft oil is so truly all-purpose, it's perfect for both deep frying and pan frying, perfect for any recipe calling for liquid shortening, perfect for homemade salad dressings. Remember, wonderful new Kraft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. Well, let's see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve. It's a balmy spring evening in Summerfield, and the great man and his nephew Leroy are strolling down the street. Leroy's on his way to visit his pal Piggy, and Gildersleeve is on his way to visit his girl, Grace. I thought you had a date with Miss Tuttle last night, Unc. Yeah, I did, Leroy. Gosh, two dates in a row? Oh, you know, I don't have a date tonight. It's just that I feel I can drop in to see Grace anytime. We're so close. Yeah. I notice when she's with you in the car, she sits close. Like there were three in the front seat. Well, the upholstery's worn out over by the door. And you're in no hurry to get it fixed, huh? <laughs> I notice when she's out with your rival, Dr. Olson, she sits close to him, too. Yes, she has to. That sneaky intern keeps his pill satchel on the seat. <laughs> wonder what he does when he calls him his Tuttle. What do you mean? Does he hold her hand, pretend that he's taking her pulse? He wouldn't dare. Yeah, I'll see you later, Leroy. Here's Miss Tuttle's place. Okay, good luck, huh? Yeah, thank you, my boy. Yeah, I, George, I'm glad I don't have to pretend I'm a doctor to hold her hand. <laughs> Hello, Grace. Why, uh, Throckmorton, I didn't expect to see you this evening. Yeah, back again. <laughs> uh, did you leave something last night? Yes. I left a kiss on your cheek and I came back to get it. <laughs> May I come in? Uh, well, uh, for just a minute, maybe. Why just a minute? Oh, all right, I'll tell you. Clarence is coming over. Clarence Olson? Every time I turn my back, that intern is operating. He said he had something very important to tell me. Yeah, I'll bet. He's completed his internship, you know. It's about time. He's been a boy intern for eight years. Throckmorton, now, don't you think you should go before he comes? Well, <laughs> there's the doorbell. Too late to leave now. Get your hat. I'll let him in. Yeah, I wonder what he has to say to Grace that's so important. Hello, Clarence. Come in. Grace, how lovely you look this evening. Oh, thank you. Radiant as a rose. He's the gushy type. <laughs> oh, you have so much color in your cheeks. Oh. Are you blushing or just excited because I'm here? <laughs> Let me feel your pulse. Oh, Clarence, stop. Oh, he's sickening. <laughs> Olson, let go of her hand. I'm here. Oh, is that you, Gildersleeve? I thought you were Grace's grandmother sitting there. <laughs> yes, yes. Grace, I thought we were going to be alone tonight. Well, Throckmorton just dropped by for a minute. A minute? Let me look at my watch. You'll just leave your minutes up. You're a one-minute egg that's done. <laughs> now, Clarence, you sat in on some of my dates with Grace. Yes, and no two people ever had a more miserable time than Grace and I. Olson. Now, you two boys say good night. Good night, Gildersleeve. Here's your hat. There's the door. Now, just a minute. I explained to Grace that I have something very important to tell her. Go ahead. I'm listening. Really, Throckmorton? You know, Grace, he's afraid to leave. He's afraid I'm going to propose. That never occurred to me. You aren't, are you? <laughs> <laughs> How can you trust a man with a laugh like that? <laughs> Well, if Gildersleeve isn't going to leave, let's go out in the car, Grace, and I'll tell you that. Oh, he's going to leave. Uh, aren't you, Throckmorton? Uh, you seem awfully anxious to get rid of me. Well, after all, Gildersleeve, I... if you won't leave, just turn your head and I'll propose right here in the parlor. Grace. Grace, darling. Olson, I... you're not serious and you know it. Are you serious? <laughs> You'll never know, will you? <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll never know what gray sees in a taffy-haired lightweight like you. Now, Throckmorton... Well, there must be something wrong with your judgment. I'll have you know I'll choose my own friends, and tonight I've chosen Clarence. <laughs> Run along, Gildersleeve. Two's company, three's a crowd. Don't crowd me, Olson. night, Unc. Well, I came home early. Did she have another headache? Yeah, Dr. Olson. Beating your time, huh? No, he just had something to talk to her about. Secret stuff? John Bond, I don't know what it was. It doesn't worry me one bit. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> eat your prunes. More coffee, Mr. Gilsey? Yeah, please, Bertie. Yes, sir. See, now, what would a handsome man like Dr. Olson like to talk about with a pretty girl like Miss Tuttle all alone on a moonlit night like last night? <laughs> Leroy, let's forget Dr. Olson. <laughs> You'll be able to forget him soon, Mr. Gillsley. What's this, Bertie? I noticed in the paper this morning that he's leaving town. He is? I didn't see that. <laughs> Leroy, hand me the paper. Sure. Quickly. Okay. It's a little squib on one of the inside pages. That is. It, oh, yes. Dr. Clarence Olson, having completed his internship at City Hospital, plans to establish a general practice in the Northwest. He's leaving this week for Seattle, Washington. Yeah. Say, he's going a long way. Yeah, you bet. I wonder if he's considered Australia. <laughs> Miss Gillsleeve, that leaves you a clear feel with Miss Tuttle. Well, not that I ever considered him competition. Oh, no. He just happens to be the type I heartily dislike. Hi, George. I wonder if Grace has heard the good news. I think I'll give her a ring. Maybe Dr. Olson gave her a ring last night. <laughs> oh, Bertie. Miss Olson's leaving town. Well, 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 well. Of course, I don't want to appear to be gloating over this. Hello? Good morning, Grace. This is Throckmorton. Oh? Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the morning paper. No, I haven't. Yeah, I imagine you heard that Clarence Olson's leaving town. Yes, and I suppose it makes you very happy. You have. Uh... Throckmorton, I was so angry with you last night. Clarence comes over on practically his last night in town, and you try to spoil it for him. Oh, Grace. It was all in good fun. Well, it wasn't funny to anybody but you. The idea, staying around when I have a date with somebody else. Well, I didn't know what he was up to. Did he propose? He only came over to tell me he's leaving town. Is that all? And I hope your conscience hurts you for being so mean to him. Now, Grace, I have no conscience about this. I have nothing against Olson, now that he's leaving town. <laughs> Imagine calling a promising young doctor a flyweight. Yeah, I didn't go that far. I just call him a lightweight. Well, I think you owe Clarence an apology. Well, I'm sorry, Grace. Why don't I come over tonight and we'll talk about it? I think I'm going to have a headache tonight. You just don't want to see me. No, I don't. Goodbye. But... Hmm. No luck, huh? For some reason, she seems to be taking Dr. Olson's side. Yeah? Yeah, I guess I did sort of spoil his date. But actually, I wish him all the luck in the world after he's gone. Yes, sir. You can afford to like him now. What's this, Bertie? They say out of sight, out of mind, and you wouldn't mind seeing him out of sight. You have. Yes, sir, that's the saying, out of sight, out of mind, and you like him out of sight. Now, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, you know when you like Dr. Olson? Yes, Bertie. That's right, when he's way out of sight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why everybody thinks I've been picking on Dr. Olson. Yeah, I wonder if Peavy's heard about his leaving town. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? Peavy, I guess you know Clarence Olson is going to Seattle. Yeah. When do you start dancing in the street? <laughs> Wait a minute. I consider Clarence a friend. How's that? 
Just because he's a rival doesn't mean I don't wish him well when he leaves, Petey. <laughs> I understand, Mr. Gildersleeve. What? I remember how kindly I felt toward one of Mrs. Peavy's suitors after he joined the army. Yeah? He went to Germany to chase the Kaiser, and I stayed home and caught Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> <laughs> he got out after a three-year hitch, and I'm still in. <laughs> My goodness. When is the good doctor leaving? Uh, next week, the paper said. And I intend to make a friend of him before he goes. Well, you should do something for him. He's leaving you a clear field with Miss Grace Tuttle. Uh, I have a little problem with Grace, Petey. You don't say. She thinks I've been a little rough on Clarence. I always thought he gave you the worst of it. Well, Peavy, we just have our little playful exchanges. But I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. And I want Grace to know how I've changed toward Clarence. Well, why don't you call her and tell her? Well, I did. She hung up on me. Mm, you are in bed. Well, Grace is right. Perhaps I should apologize to Clarence. He isn't a bad sort, Petey. He's a good spender in here. He's free-hearted, all right. He took me and my date to dinner once. Of course, he dropped me off before he took my girl home, but he probably didn't mean anything by it. No, he could have been saving gasoline. <laughs> you know, I don't think it was that. He was driving my car. <laughs> but I've forgotten all that. Peavy, I owe Clarence Olson a dinner. And he owes you for the gas and the girl. Well, I'm not one to hold a grudge. I'm going to invite good old Clarence to dinner. And I'll invite Grace, too. Well, that should get you in good with Miss Tuttle. Peavy, I'm doing this to prove to Clarence I'm his friend. I'm not doing it to impress Grace Tuttle. <laughs> Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I could have phoned Grace instead of coming over. But I didn't want her to hang up on me before I could explain. Yeah, I hope she doesn't like Peavy and thinks I'm giving Olsen a dinner just to make up with her. Perhaps I should make it a big affair. Sort of a testimonial dinner. Yeah, if I, George, I will. I'll go all out. <laughs> Hello, Grace. It's me. Oh, I thought it was the laundry man. <laughs> no, but I'm willing to throw in the towel. <laughs> May I come in? Well... Uh... Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I came over to ask if you can come to dinner tomorrow evening. We had a date, you know, before all this came up. I know we did, but... And I want Clarence to join us. You want Clarence to join us? Yeah, good old Clarence. As a matter of fact, I've decided to turn it into a testimonial dinner for him. How does that sound? Uh, Throckmorton, are you all right? Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah, I realize I've done Clarence an injustice, and I want to make amends. Honor bright. I really believe you do. He's just starting out in this profession. Fine young doctor. And I want to give him a good send-off. I hoped you'd feel that way. You bet. He's leaving all his friends here in Summerfield, going way out to the Northwest where he doesn't know anyone. It isn't going to be easy establishing a practice. I know. You probably have to start way out in the country, tending the sick in the woods, fording the rivers, through the rain, following the stork. <laughs> oh, Throckmorton. Will you come to our dinner, Grace? I'll be delighted, and I think you're wonderful. You do? You know that kiss you came back for the other night and didn't get? Yes. Here it is. <laughs> I like being good. <laughs> Great for the sleeve. We'll be back in just a minute. You'll find a brand new label tomorrow in the department where your grocer displays cooking and salad oils. It tells you there's a brand new kind of craft oil. Craft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. Here's why the craft folks put the words all-purpose on every bottle of new craft oil. Instead of being blended for just one or two uses, new craft oil is blended right for dozens of uses, for every kind of deep frying and pan frying, for any baking recipe that calls for liquid shortening, and for the smoothest salad dressings you've ever made. 
New Kraft Oil is so truly all-purpose, you'll use it every day. The good cooks in the Kraft kitchens urge you to use New Kraft Oil in cakes, cookies, and quick breads. And for frying, too. It's a great convenience to pour your shortening out of a bottle instead of having to dig it out of a can. Measuring is exact and easy. You'll also like the exclusive zip-out window in every Kraft Oil label. Pull off this handy little tab, and you see right into the bottle. You know ahead of time when your supply is running low. When you're shopping, be sure to get new Kraft Oil. It's perfect for deep frying and pan frying, for baking and salad dressings. Wonderful new Kraft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. Well, the great Gildersleeve got in touch with his girl, Grace Tuttle, when he horned in on her date with Dr. Olson. Of course, the water commissioner has never liked his rival, but when he learned the doctor is leaving Somerfield, his attitude changed considerably. Yes, sir, the more I think about Olson, the better I like him. Bertie! That's you, Miss Gildersleeve! <laughs> yeah, it's me. Yeah, I need your help on a little project, Bertie. Yes, sir. I'm thinking of giving a testimonial dinner tomorrow night. Yes, sir. You think you can prepare it? Oh, Bertie's cooked everything else. I don't know why she can't cook a testimonial. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean. I thought I'd invite Mr. Peavy. Yes, sir. And Miss Tuttle, of course. Of course. And Dr. Olson. Come again? He'll be the guest of honor. Dr. Olson's going to be the guest of honor? Yeah, that's right, Bertie. The dinner's for him? Yes, indeed. You inviting your best girl and your worst rival to the same dinner? Bertie, why do you keep asking questions? Because I can't believe the answers. (laughs) Well, after all, he's leaving town. That's the answer. Well, Bertie, it's my way of... Patching fences. Yes, sir. You want to patch them with roast beef or baked ham? <laughs> Hi. Hello, Leroy. Yeah, I'll leave the dinner to you, Bertie. Yes, sir. What dinner? Well, Mr. Gilsleeve's giving the testimonial dinner for Dr. Olson. Yeah? Gosh, you sure are glad to get him out of town, aren't you? Why does everybody keep saying that? Because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Bertie, better go plan that dinner. <laughs> Now, my boy, I have my reasons for inviting him over. It's a trap, huh? What? You want me to hang a bucket of water over the door for when he comes in? (laughs) No. How about wiring the doorbell so when he sticks his finger on the buzzer... There'll be none of that. Let the air out of his tires while he's eating your dinner? Boy, if I was Dr. Olson, I'd never walk into a booby trap like this. Is he really coming? Well, I've left messages, but he hasn't answered my call. I think I'll stop by the hospital to see him. Too bad you can't get him on the phone. What do you mean? If he gets you in that hospital, he may have your appendix out before you can tell him why you're there. (laughs) Yes, yes. Inviting Olson to dinner is eating a lot of crow. But it'll sure put me in solid with Grace. Oh, there he is in his office. Uh, may I come in, Clarence? Oh, Gildersleeve, delighted to see you. You are? Never expected such a break. Climb up on the table. What? Now, what did I do with my scalpel? Nurse Ether. You know, wait a minute. My gloves, mask, gown, prepare for surgery. Get over. Olson, I'm here on a social call. Fine, we'll take out your social security. <laughs> Stop pushing me toward the table. I came to invite you to dinner. Uh, uh, you're inviting me to dinner? Why? Well, confound it, Olson. I'm trying to be friendly. With me? Well, after all, you're leaving town. I thought you'd be around to gloat. That's why I didn't answer your phone calls. Now, well, Clarence, this is a legitimate invitation. I've invited Grace. Grace? I told her I wanted to do this for you. Now I see what's rattling around in that gourd you use for a head. (laughs) Clarence, let's not bite the hand that's trying to feed you. Now, Gildersleeve, you know you're doing this just to impress Grace. Me? Oh, no. You're glad to get rid of me. 
Look, Clarence, I have a date with Grace tomorrow night. To prove my sincerity, you can pick her up and bring her to the dinner. Well, thank you, Gildersleeve. Yeah, that's all right. I'll be glad to take your date. But I don't know where I'll take her to dinner. Gee, what a hard man to like. (laughs) That sneaky Olsen. He needn't think he's going to take my girl somewhere else to dinner. I'll put him on the spot. While I'm here, I'll invite the head of the hospital. That ex-intern will have to come. Yes, yes? Uh, May I come in? Come in, come in. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mason? Yes, what is it, what is it? Well, I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, water commissioner. Uh, Something wrong with our water? Don't you want to see the janitor? That's who you want, the janitor. Uh, No, 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 I want you. I don't know anything about water. I'm head of the hospital. Uh, Well, that's why I want you. I mean, uh, uh, Dr. Mason, I know you're a busy man, but I'd like to invite you to dinner. I'm afraid I don't understand. You know, it's sort of a testimonial dinner for one of your young doctors. Oh? Did he deliver your baby or something? No, no. <laughs> no, I'm not married. This is Dr. Clarence Olson, who's leaving Summerfield. Olson? Oh, yes. Good man. Good man. You know, I just thought it'd mean a lot to him if an important man like you would come. <laughs> uh, nice of you to ask me, but I, I don't think I can make it. Oh, you know, Dr. Mason, I realize this is an unusual request, but... I know your reputation for giving young doctors a boost. How about it? I'd like to, but I have such a busy schedule. Yeah, but busy men should relax. That's what you tell your patients, isn't it? Uh, yes. Uh, Doctor, let's not be afraid to take our own medicine, especially in a good cause. Uh, Well, uh, let's see. Tomorrow night, seven-ish, roast beef. I'll be there. I'll be there. (laughs) table looks beautiful, Bertie. Thank you, sir. Things in the kitchen smell mighty good, too. Thank you, sir. Ah, get it! Not so loud, Bertie. Might be the head of the hospital. Oh, I forgot. They're used to them quiet zones. (laughs) Yeah, I'll get the door. And I'll get the kitchen. Dr. Mason? No, and this is your friendly neighborhood druggist. (laughs) Baby, come in. I forgot to turn on the porch light. I don't need a light to lead me to Bertie's roast beef. <laughs> well, you're the first arrival. Have a chair. Thank you. Finally get Dr. Olson to come, did you? Yeah, I told him the head of the hospital will be here, so he'd better show up. Mr. Gardensleeve, you've certainly gone to a lot of trouble to entertain your arrival. Yeah, I know, but it'll soon be over. And tonight, let's say some nice things about him. I don't know Dr. Olson well enough to pay him a lot of compliments, Mr. Gardensleeve. Well, it isn't easy for me to say anything about a fellow who's always trying to steal my girl. Frankly, I'll be glad when he settles in Seattle. By the way, where is Miss Tuttle? Well, as a friendly gesture, I'm letting Olson bring her tonight. (laughs) That's about as friendly as you can get. (laughs) Oh, there they are, Peavy. Excuse me. Mm. Yeah, well... Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Dr. Mason, come in. Thank you. (laughs) Don't close the door. There are a couple of lovebirds coming up the walk. Oh? Dr. Olson and his girlfriend. Oop. They don't have to stand out there looking at the moon. We're uh, waiting, Grace. Hello, Throckmorton. Fine-looking couple, eh, Gildersleeve? Oh, yes. Are are you coming, Grace? Uh, Don't rush us, Gildersleeve. I'm showing Grace the stars. If he doesn't bring my girl in the house, he's going to see some new ones. More coffee, anybody? You no, know, I don't think we can persuade anybody, mm. Bertie. Mm, I'm up to here. It was a wonderful dinner, Bertie. Delicious. Yes, it was. Thank you, one and all. I want you to know, Bertie, you served my favorite dessert. Oh, Dr. Olson, you can thank Mr. Gilsley for that. Oh. He took pains to have everything you like. Even his best girl. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was a wonderful thought, Throckmorton. Well, I wanted Clarence to have something to remember about Summerfield. Oh, I have quite a lot to remember. Haven't we, Grace? (laughs) (laughs) I'll be glad when he's gone. Excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Peavy? When are you going to make the speech? I have to get home and write to Mrs. Peavy. Well, I did have a few words to say about our departing friend. That isn't necessary, Throckmorton. No, I insist. What's a testimonial dinner without a little testimony? (laughs) Well, if it's going to be a long speech, maybe I will have some coffee. No, I'll be brief, Peavy. Now, your attention, folks. I uh, thought it appropriate to have this little dinner party with close friends... And the distinguished head of City Hospital. Thank you. As a gesture of our high regard for a man who, despite our banter and fun, has crept into our hearts. My, my. (laughs) As Dr. Mason mentioned to me, he's a good man. A man Summerfield hates to lose. But we know a man with Clarence Olson's personality, drive, and ability will make his mark in Seattle. Mm. <laughs> Gee, that's a lot to say, but it's worth it to have Grace all to myself when he leaves. <laughs> Gildersleeve, your fine tribute to Dr. Olson has started me thinking. Uh, yes, Dr. Mason? Since he has made so many friends, uh, I believe he would be quite an addition to the permanent staff here at City Hospital. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Mason. Clarence has made his plans. Yes, yes, thanks to your touching demonstration of friendship, Gildersleeve. I've decided to stay here. The great Gildersleeve will be back in just 30 seconds. Next time you go shopping, be sure to get a bottle of wonderful new craft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. Some oils are good for one use and not so good for others, but new craft oil is perfect for everything. It's so truly all-purpose, you'll use new craft oil in your kitchen every day for pan frying, deep frying, baking, and delicious homemade salad dressing. Remember, new craft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. I declare, Mr. Gilsleeve, I can't get over Dr. Olson deciding to stay here in Summerfield. Yeah, Bertie. Your testimonial dinner backfired, huh, Unc? In a way. And you even let him bring your girl to the dinner. <laughs> well, I got to drive her home. Yeah? Yeah, when Olsen went out to his car, he had four flat tires. <laughs> Leroy, did you let the air out of Dr. Olson's tires? Heck no, I was at the movie. Then who did? Uh... <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> This lead is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, William Randolph, Mary Shipp, George Neese, Herb Butterfield, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. Delicious cold cuts for luncheon or supper make a welcome change of pace from the hot meals you've been serving. Easy to fix, too. But here's a tip. Be sure there's delicious craft prepared mustard on the table. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard. Mild craft mustard so smooth and delicately spiced, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added to give it extra zip. Keep both kinds on hand for different tastes. Next time, get craft prepared mustard.
Now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx on the NBC Radio Network. 